Hey everyone, this is Zipper Designs from Noble Desktop, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to quickly sequence layers in Adobe After Effects. So we're going to be taking a whole bunch of layers here, and we're going to be using the sequence layer tool in order to order them in rows so they all appear in a series. We're also going to be using alt brackets to make sure our layers are still visible even after they've played. So, you know, this is what it looks like when it's completed. And you can see how each letter animates in, one after the other. And um, this is super useful because as designers, we're often given a file from Illustrator, for example, that has only footage layers in it. Like there's no text. So like we're usually, we'd be using a text animator for something that looks like this. We can't do that in this kind of situation. So sequence layers lets us quickly animate in similar looking movements, but in a way that works with object layers and like footage layers, like not just text. Um, so the only external asset we're gonna be using is this logo file here. Um, and it's, it's going to already be preloaded into the project and it's already been set up for, for use in Illustrator and you can find the entire project file, all the assets in the video description below. So let's get started. First thing we're going to be doing is I'm going to turn off visibility because here's the, that's the finished logo, turn on visibility on the file we're going to be using. Double click to go inside that pre-comp and don't be alarmed by all these layers. We're, we're going to neaten them up as we go along. Um, <clears throat> sorry about that. So the first thing that we're going to be starting with, we're going to be animating the main name over here, the fit with us part. That's all color coded in purple. The subtitles are like in this kind of pinkish color. So the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to shift click on all of the fit with us layers, fit with us. And uh, it's important to note that the order you select your layers in, and that's the order that the uh, layers are going to be sequenced in. So if I started from us with fit, this animation would play backwards. So then, um, how long do I want them to be? I'm gonna put each one a couple of frames, maybe eight, eight frames each. Alt on a PC. Um, and if you're using a Mac, I believe that is the command key. Um, so alt right bracket to cut them short. So here, let's make this a little bigger so we can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to slide them all together just a few frames in because I want, I want there to be a brief pause at the beginning of the project. Right click on any selected keyframe, head over to uh, keyframe assistant. Here it is, sequence layers. And note that I'm not using overlap here. Um, overlap would involve having to calculate, uh, you know, how long you want each of these layers to be visible while the other one's playing. I mean, literally how, you know, you want your layers to overlap for, but there's no need for us to do that. So we're gonna hit okay without checking that box. And now you can see, there you go, it plays. But you've noticed that, you know, the, the initial letters, the initial words disappear as the whole thing plays, and we want them all to be playing, we want them all to be visible, you know, as soon as they appear on the screen. So, let's see, let's pull the layer out, The uh, sorry about that, pull the playhead out over here. Actually, let's pull it all the way out to the end of our uh, composition and then alt or command right bracket. So then that'll extend all the layers out. And there we go, sequence just like that. And um, I'm actually gonna show what it looks like if I were to select it in reverse. So us with fit, selected it backwards, keyframe assistant, sequence layers, yes please. Um, and it'll have played backwards. You see that as I scrub through the timeline? And that's not what we want. So let's fix that. Control Z, perfect. All right, so let's head on to like this little subtitle over here. So what we're gonna be doing is first, let's neaten up this whole thing. It's quite crowded with all these uh, letters. So I'm going to shift click on all the pink layers over here, all those little layers. I'm gonna right click on any selected layer. I'm gonna pre-compose them. That's gonna turn this into a pre-comp. So it's like a composition within a composition. Let's call this subtitle text. Yes, I know. Pre-comp. And great, there we go. I'm gonna color code it again. I just like all my things color coded, put that back to pink. 
and double click to head inside our new pre comp. Um, oh, I see the background here is black, so let's head up to composition. Sorry about that. Uh, composition settings, and I'm going to change the background color to white just so I can see what I'm doing. All right, let's get to animating. So with my playhead at the origin, once again, going to grab every single layer here with shift click. Let me push up my interface a bit as well so I can see all my layers at once. And I'm going to expand the timeline using... I'm going to expand out the timeline down here using the slider. Thank you very much. So I can have a, a uh, better view at, you know, the timing on my timeline. And well, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to hit P for position on my keyboard. And I'm going to slide in about like half a second in about. And I'm going to hit position on all of my keyframes. And you can see since they're all selected, they all drop a position keyframe down if I just hit it on one of them. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm actually animating this a bit backwards. Um, so, you know, as you may have noticed in the uh, initial example, when I play it, keep an eye on the subtitle text. It all zooms in and it kind of overshoots a little bit. That's where we're going to be animating it. We're going to be animating the final position, the overshooting a little bit, and then taking it completely off the screen. So that way, when we actually uh, play it, you know, it'll play in the correct order, overshooting a bit. You know, um, it'll zoom in from off the screen, overshoot a bit, settle back into place. So now I'm going to move a little earlier, as you can see. Um, and then I'm actually going to reselect all my layers. Sorry about that. And then I'm going to shift over all of them. Sorry about that. Grab the X coordinate. And again, if I shift over one of them, they're all going to shift over a little bit. So what I did was I grabbed my X coordinate here and I clicked and dragged it a little bit to the left. So they all went over a little bit to the left. And then I'm going to head over to the origin, the beginning of the timeline. Gonna again grab any selected layer, drag the x coordinate, that first number, all the way to the right. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Excellent. Um, there we go. So now, when I play it, they all slide in. But we want this to, you know, have a sequence kind of look to it. So what we're gonna be doing next is grab once again, grab all of our layers. And again, I always want to start from the beginning because the direction that you select your layers in, that's going to determine the order that they're sequenced in. And I have a PC, so I alt right bracket. If you have a Mac, I apologize. I said the wrong key before, but it is actually the option key. So option right bracket will cut these guys short. And now I'm going to sequence layer them. So right click on any selected keyframe, hit over to keyframe assistant. Sequence layers. Again, no overlap. I don't want these guys to overlap at all. All right. So as I scrub through my timeline, you'll see all these guys slide on. Now, you know, they slide on in sequence. Now, like before, we want actually all of these to remain visible after they've, um, you know, slid onto screen. So as they are now, not so great. So I'm going to move my plate actually up quite a bit just to be safe. And again, alt or option right bracket extends them all the way out. So that should be much better. There we go. I actually think uh, on my own, I'm going to speed this up a little bit. Um, I'm going to move the, um, the uh, keyframes closer together. But for purposes of this tutorial, you can see what I've done here. Um, and also it's worth mentioning that the, um, so the sequence behavior is based on when the first selected layer starts, right? So if I head down here, you know, my very first layer over here, you know, that, that layer, uh, triggers the sequence to start. Um, but as before, the order of the layers that's, uh, that it's playing in is based on the selection order. All right, I am going to enable motion blur now, which means I'm going to, so this is my layer modes visible. I'm gonna head over to toggle switches modes. Thank you. And I guess I've done it already, but if this is not clicked, 
this row with the three little circles overlapping, that's motion blur. And I'm gonna hit this, enable all motion blur. That's really important because if you don't have this enabled, this doesn't mean anything. And yeah, it just gives a bit of motion blur uh, to your project. Um, it's worth mentioning though, turn this on at the end just because it, um, it it's a little harder on your uh, machine to, uh, to process that. All right, I'm gonna head out to my uh, main comp and you can see, let's play our finished product. There we go. So this version moves a little faster than the original, but uh, you know, the principle remains the same. Anyways, so that's it. Sequence layers is one of my personal favorite techniques for how it so quickly automates an otherwise long process for ordering layers. It makes otherwise difficult to animate layers easier to work with. Any animation that involves layers moving in a set order can benefit from sequence layers. It can also be used for ordering images in a frame by frame animation, non-text layers, and even adjustment layers. If it's a layer, it can be sequenced. I actually have prepared over here, check it out, a couple of Edward Moybridge. Uh, he was a photographer that uh, pioneered some really important inventions in the history of video and photography. You can check him out. But, um, you know, I sequenced his uh, photographs and turned it into a run cycle using uh, sequence animation. So you can use that, you know, also, like I mentioned, uh, frame by frame animation. So honestly, the, you know, if you just need something to move in order, this is, this is a technique for you. So that's all for this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed learning how to sequence layers and uh, <laughs> sequence layers in Adobe After Effects. And this has been Sapporo Zions for Noble Desktop.